Have you heard about high cortisol and low cortisol and the fact that either one of these conditions can lead to something called leaky gut syndrome? Hi, I'm Steve Wright, co-creator of Solving Leaky Gut. And in this video, you're going to listen in on a conversation I'm having with Dr. Sarah Gottfried. She's a Harvard-trained physician, and we're currently talking about what happens in our body specifically when we get stressed. And this includes the actual hormone sequence step-by-step step and how it begins to actually eat away at our gut walls and cause leaky gut. Let's listen in. We know that when you're under chronic stress, and the key here is that you have high perceived stress, and that also creates this exciting opportunity that we can talk about in a moment. So number one is decreased gastric secretion. So not making enough of that gastric acid in your stomach. Number two, decreased vagal activity. So we talked a little bit about what that does, including decreasing the pancreatic enzymes. You can have slower transit time. You can have constipation. It can also trigger IBS. Decreased gut mobility is kind of another way to think about it. And then number three, we know that the gut microbiome is affected by stress-induced changes in the body. And it's a direct effect. It's not secondary. So it's totally direct. And you know, quick side note here, Steve, I think the microbiome is just maybe the sexiest thing happening in medicine right now. It's, it, we're going to be hearing so much about it for the next 10 years. I just, you know, I'm doing the happy dance over here. So number four <laughs> is that your gut is part of your nervous system. You know, I, I talked about at the beginning, the, these two parts, the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system, but it's really important to realize that your gut is connected. You know, your intestinal mucosa is part of this web of the myenteric plexus. Uh, so you have kind of this through line, this, this uh, download that's happening both ways between the brain and the gut. We talked a moment ago about the HPA TG and how your hypothalamus, when you're under stress, when your amygdala senses that you've got some threat to the body, that the hypothalamus makes CRH, corticotropin releasing hormone. And this directly increases your gut permeability. So ding, 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 this is where the leaky gut kind of fits in. You know, it, it also tells your adrenals to make cortisol, but there's this direct effect on gut permeability. And that's why, you know, when you go through kind of the list of what is linked to leaky gut, High cortisol is like at the top of the list, alcohol. You know, there's many things involved, but I really want to focus on this cortisol piece. There's also evidence that's very strong linking chronic high perceived stress to inflammatory bowel disease like Crohn's and ulcerative colitis, food intolerances, bowel syndrome, GERD, and then this then leads you down the path to bacterial overgrowth, dysbiosis. So those are that's kind of my top my top list of the link between the stress induced changes that happen in the body and how they affect the gut. How's that, Steve? I thought that was a pretty awesome list. So can you let's let's dive into the the I believe it was the CRH um, pathway there a little bit. Both from uh, what happens when you're having high cortisol and um, potentially more CRH. And then, then what happens, because there's gonna be a lot of people listening to this who have low cortisol, who have full yeah. on autoimmune diseases, who are not even able to get help from steroids anymore. So what can we explore both of those sides of, of this hormone in the gut? Sure, yeah, so let's talk about the low cortisol for a moment, because I, I think you know a lot of people will hear the story with high cortisol and they'll blank out because they feel like, well, that's not my problem, I'm low cortisol. But darling, the way that you got to the low cortisol place was through the high cortisol pathway. So we wanna back up. You know, the, the issue with low cortisol is that your HPA TG has been wonky for so long that your adrenals couldn't keep up with the demand. So the CRH, the corticotropin releasing hormone from the hypothalamus that went to the pituitary and said, uh, dude, send a message to the adrenals to make more cortisol. Like that's been happening for so long that it's a, a supply and demand problem and you just can't keep up. And that's why you're in a low cortisol place. So we can certainly talk about, you know, how to interrupt this pattern, whether you're high cortisol or low cortisol or some sort of combination of the two. And I can tell you when I tested myself 
back 10 years ago, I was super high cortisol in the morning. That's kind of my phenotype. You know, I'm, I'm sort of like a type A in the morning. <laughs> and then I'd be low cortisol before dinner, you know, right when I'm supposed to show up for my kids and make a healthy dinner. That's when I really just wanted to go to bed because I, I couldn't pump enough blood to my brain and uh, I'd rather be in bed. So you can have a combination of the two, but ultimately kind of the last stage is that you're low in cortisol and there's plenty that you can do about this. So does that answer your question? Do you want to go a little bit further with CRH and some of the effects or do you want to talk more about cortisol and like how do you turn this around? Um, yeah, just for a moment, I'd love to go a little bit nerdier on you know some CRH and, and give everyone kind of um, and even if you want to tie it into T3 or something like that, but even kind of just give a little bit more of why hormones are so important at the leaky gut level, just for the, the, and, you know, the epithelium cells to work. Yeah, you got it. So CRH, that corticotropin releasing hormone that's coming from the hypothalamus, we talked about some of the things that it does. You know, it, it tells the pituitary to make ACTH, adrenocorticotropin hormone. And it also tells your part of the brain, the the locus ceruleus, norepinephrine, to go into fight or flight. So it activates you to make this epinephrine and norepinephrine. And then there's this effect that we just had in our list of CRH directly increasing gut permeability. Um, so you're telling the adrenals to make more cortisol, you're causing problems with the gap junctions in the mucosa of the gut. And this basically sets off this whole cascade. I mean, you basically have this vicious cycle that's happening and it's not linear. You know, I'm talking about some of these different effects that happen when your amygdala is taken over by threat, whatever that threat is, minor or major. And it's, you know, these happen simultaneously. They happen kind of side by side. That idea of a more linear causation is kind of old school. You know, this is much more of a matrix that we want to be thinking about. The cool part is that as you start to interrupt these patterns, you can create virtuous sites and you can kind of step away from some of this uh, roadkill damage that we've been talking about. 